Hello, and thank you for taking the time to join us for the Youth Passing System webinar series, where we continue our mission of empowering youth coaches to spread the ball around and score more points with an effective passing game. So after years of being asked, which passing concept should I run for teams, gosh, anywhere from high school on down, we created a streamlined plug and play passing system for busy coaches to just plug into their run game. Our program specifically improves your quarterback's decision making, ensuring your team plays confidently on game day, relying on muscle memory to light up that scoreboard. My name is Matt Lasker, and alongside the eternal one, fake coach Leach, together we will be your guides through this free webinar series. So after spending a few hours with eternal coach Leach and I in completing this webinar series, you will have a pre-snap to the next snap repeatable process your quarterbacks will step through on every single play. If you don't have this, it is a must because without a quarterback who understands what's going on, you don't have a chance. You will have pre-made or custom Engaging lesson plans, your athletes will take home and play on their phones outside of the pressure of practice, which is huge for truly understanding the why. And lastly, you will have mastered your quarterback room as our streamlined passing game ensures you and your quarterback can figure out issues on the fly because we boiled it down to a few key points. How's it going today, coach? As you know, we've given our audience a chance to ask you icebreaker questions to start each webinar. This week, they all want to know what TV shows you're into. And uh, during the season, it's good to watch, uh, you know, to kind of get your head straight. But I did, <clears throat> I'm up to date on Better Call Saul. I'm up to date on Yellowstone. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I'll tell you, that's part of it. The, the kids got me into Stranger Things, and <clears throat> I'm certainly not ready for this season. I'm about halfway through. Um, and uh, oh, I love those shows, Better Call Saul and Yellowstone. I'm not sure if Better Call Saul is better than Breaking Bad, as some people say. Breaking Bad might be the best show of all time, but Yellowstone, pleasantly surprised. Great show as well. Thanks for sharing that, Coach. Today we'll get into formations and the skill sets behind the positions within the formations. Next episode, we'll get into breaking down each concept uh, and the reads and progressions within. So let's just take a quick look back and refresh our memory on what is involved with the youth passing system in terms of formations and concepts. So formations out of our spread style, we have these three types of formations, two by two, three by one in our two back sets. Now, if you don't run air raid or spread, you can add any type of formations that you want. I want to be able to have three receivers attack one side of the field so if you'd give me that in your formations, I will make this work 100%. And that can come in, in in different ways, whether we use motion or it's set up a wing back, a tight end, a running back. They all count. Okay. And then our passing concepts, you'll see to the right, our four core passing concepts, fade out, stick, corner, and verts. And then our three screens. And our screen game is very much an extension of our run game. So you're going to choose your own runs, obviously, as we've said. I'm happy to give you my suggestions if you want to run something that we run. But I didn't put it on here because I want to be clear that you can plug in any run plays that you want to this system. All right. So as a reminder, we made this deck for you. I'm happy to send this deck to you as a true playbook if you run the spread style of, of the youth passing system. Or you can use this as a template. But essentially... We've created for, for our formations hard and fast rules that our kids know to live by. We'll create cards for this that you can print out or you can buy our laminated set. Totally up to you. So you'll be able to take these on the field if you need it. We'll even create cards for specific position coaches for the drills that we are suggesting. What are the key coaching points within those drills? Or, so you can all have that at your fingertips at practice. So you can see on this one, for an example, Y is always on the line of scrimmage while H is always off. So as our kids learn the formations with those two rules in mind, uh, as Y comes to your side of the ball, uh, you will have to adjust whether you're as an outside receiver or obviously this H who travels with the Y when we go three by one to either side. Here it is laid out in front of you, the typical formations we run. But again, it's completely up to you what you want to run. So, Coach, where I live in Northern California, there are still way too many run-dominant high schools and youth teams around here. As we start our discussion on wide receiver skill sets for this specific offense, 
Why do you believe it's so important to start training wide receivers at a young age? And I'm genuinely fearful that on our team, if, if, if me and the other coaches don't get them right, that about a generation from now, their kids and their grandkids won't have hands. From a lack of use, those hands just disappear. You know, you got like a Tyrannosaurus Rex who's clearly good at eating things, big old jaws and all that stuff, fairly athletic and run. We have to correct this because it's going to be best for all these guys uh, that they have good hand development and that they don't evolve to where they don't have hands. Hilarious, Coach. Love it. But I do get your point. We have to train these kids as early as they show interest to learn the fundamentals and in today's modern football and the way we're going, even the NFL is starting to look more and more like college football every day. Receivers are extremely valuable, and the earlier we can start helping them with their craft, the better. I want to talk briefly about the skill sets within. Hopefully, you are an uber-talented team that has five great athletes that you can put in any position, and they can run the routes and remember their assignments and do all those great things. I hope that's the case for you. In reality, what tends to happen is that you have a few guys that you really need to build your offense around. And so I want to make clear who that needs to be, putting your best players in the right positions so you can score points. Okay, so let's start with our two by two set down at the bottom here. So I want you to kind of think of your T, which is your running back, your Y and your H as kind of the triangle offense. <laughs> I'm a big basketball fan, Warriors fan more than Bulls, but definitely love the history of it. So if you imagine Y, T, and H as your triangle offense, those three guys, especially the lower levels you go, the less talent you have probably to choose from. So if you had three guys only on your team to put at vital positions, it would be T, Y, and H. Why is a traditional tight end for the most part, probably your best all around receivers as far as size, hands, speed is obviously we want the guy to be fast. Uh, we can't just be as slow as a lineman, but size and ability to catch and run his routes well, those things outweigh speed. But we do want our Y to be a, an athletic, fast guy as well. Now, we don't do too many personnel changes in this offense. Y is one of them. If you do have more of a blocking type of tight end versus a uh, receiving tight end that's maybe not big, uh, we we tend to swap them out for a slot receiver type of body versus a tight end body for different reasons, whether we want to run go fast or run more spread style. But why is really the only one of the only positions that we have personnel changes for because you can go from extreme body types to to another. H is very much a standard slot receiver type of body. So think Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, that type of guy in youth football uh, or lower levels of high school. He might be your second best running back. We do pull him into the backfield for this two back set uh, as well but he's also probably one of your best athletes, one of your best players in general. And if you had to pick a position for the fastest guy on your team, it would probably be this H, okay? Now T, generally speaking, in youth and, and lower levels of high school, uh, a lot of coaches default that as their best all-around player. Since we throw a lot, that might, not, that might be more of a downhill back for me, um, we definitely throw to the running backs out of the backfield. So good hands is, is, is essential. Um, but he's probably not my best athlete. Uh, all things being equal, my best athlete is probably at Y or H. But T should not be far behind. If you put your best athlete at, at T, you're not going to be in a bad position, especially if you run the ball more. If you're a run-heavy team and you're using the youth passing system, as a as your passing system and your running offense then you know obviously put your running back where they belong uh, but if you're running the spread style um, he's probably more of a downhill back that can get the tough yards get up field catch the ball and block um, more than just the straight pure athlete now the outside receivers l and r or x and z um, however you guys want to see them um 
the, don't get me wrong. They get a lot of balls. And when we run corner routes, I'd say the snag that is paired with the corner concept gets probably the majority of the balls in this offense. So they will be running snags, which are spot routes, slant and sit said, said plainly, they run a lot of go routes and fades. Uh, they are the first read on almost every progression. So they need to be able to go up and get the ball. So they are absolutely going to be utilized. Uh, don't get me wrong. When I say the, the three interior positions are more important, I, I'm not discounting the outside positions. They need to have solid hands. If anything, I'd say size and hands are the best attributes, uh, but they run a lot of go routes uh, where they're the first option. So they also need to release off the ball and get up field uh, with urgency. So they can't just be slow. I'd say the core attributes are good hands, have a little size, and then speed being the third most important of the three. Okay. And as you can see in our three by one set to the top of the screen up here, the H will flip um, and get involved with the passing game on three by one. And we love our plays at a three by one. Okay. And just as a side note, we have the L and R as left and right. So those receivers know they are not ever swapping sides. This in our world, uh, the L receiver stays on the left side and is an expert at running their plays in concepts from the left side and the R does it from their side and only stays on that side. The only people that swap sides in my spread formations are the interior Y and H talking about the quarterback. You've obviously chosen the quarterback, but in, in our, in our world, we don't care if he throws 50 yards, if they can attack 30 yards downfield and then, you know, attack sideways on the field and, and be able to throw a lot of accurate screens um, we are in good shape. We're happy. It's more about decision-making and accuracy than having a strong arm. Okay. Decision-making is one, a B and C, which is exactly why we made this player book decision-making software for quarterbacks. As a reminder, the player book platform is preloaded and configured with the reads and progressions for all of the youth passing system concepts. But even more importantly, our pre-snap to the next snap process is preloaded. So quarterbacks will get high repetition stepping through the process in these concepts at your practice. Then they'll get unlimited virtual repetitions of stepping through the process and the concepts on their mobile phones in their own time through our platform outside the pressures of practice. So by the time you guys get to game day, they are working off muscle memory, playing fast and lighting up that scoreboard. All right, coach, we get asked a lot about how lightweight our offense is in terms of concepts and scheme. It seems like most coaches want a huge playbook and want to talk about scheme all day long. What do you say to coaches with this concern? Figure out how to be more precise in how we teach the stuff. So we spend more time really thinking about practice and organizing practice than we do uh, scheme because, uh, you know, what we select and what we choose to do we try to rep it as often as we can and be as sharp and specific at it as we possibly can. Absolutely, Coach. I couldn't agree more. Staying with our core concepts from year to year just allows me to learn new ways to teach them even better. Every year, I look back and, man, I wish I had this drill three years ago. That team would have been that much better. Or, man, I wish I had this way of teaching a few years ago. This would have really helped. So that's why we created this platform. It's a new way to train the mental side of the game, and we cannot be more excited to give it to you guys. So in next week's episode, we'll get deep into each of these concepts, talk about the actual progression in detail, but you'll notice in the youth passing system, we don't care about coverage. We don't care about if the middle of the field is open or closed. Those are all great things for quarterbacks to know and understand, but in this system, we've streamlined it. If you are reading the cornerback like we are in the youth passing system and he backs up, well, does he need to know that's cover three or does he just need to know if he can throw to that backspace, right? If the cornerback is looks like he's in cover three, far back from the line of scrimmage, seven yards or more in the pre-snap, and then when the quarterback snaps it, he, he flies down to the flats and the quarterback knows that that person has vacated that deep third and he can throw to the deep third now. Does the quarterback need to understand rotations? Does the quarterback need to understand that they were in cover three and they rotated to cover two? No. He just understands that that deep third person vacated the deep third and that's where he can throw it now. So again, we'll get into deeper details as we move forward through this 
We have made it easier than ever for quarterbacks to know how to read six easy passing plays, all based on open grass reads, all very systematic in its approach, very little gray area for these younger quarterbacks to get confused with. So as always, thanks for watching. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions. Please join us at playerbook.com to find other coaches that run the youth passing system and that want to network and help each other win. I'll be in there as well. So hopefully I'll talk to you guys there or I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for joining.